So, this must be fishing with Jimmy and Timmy. I'm Jimmy. Timmy. <laughs> Timmy. We actually ran down the boat, the bait shop, and they were out of salties, which is what we normally use. But we got a couple eels. The other two are out on the lines right now. And this stank ass shit. Possibly the nastiest shit. Ooh. You could imagine. <laughs> Tim, how's that shit smell? It smells like a sack full of assholes. Sack full of assholes. Damn shit looks like it too. Yeah, it's, that's some stank shit. I think after this trip, we're pretty much done with that. Chum chum. And we got one, two, three, four rods out. All strapped up with either that stank ass shit, eel, and. What'd you have? Some old ass eel on the other one? On the tiger pole, yeah. I put a on little, old little tiger right there. Stubby. Stubby's been the one lately, though. Stubby's been the one that they hold in the first two of the year. Pretty style ones. Nice ones. Nice. Courtesy of Timmy. This is all of our shit just spread out. Using regular bales. Regular ass cowbells. Stank ass bait. Didn't have any salties, didn't have any brim, nothing that we actually use on the regular, to be honest. Except for that stank ass shit over here. It was like old fucking deer meat and salties and brim. All kinds of weird ass shit. A little bit of eel. A buffet of fucking slum. This is actually our go juice for tonight. Black velvet. Black baby. velvet. It's like the poor man's crown. It's an everyday thing though. But we'll definitely check back in whenever we get some kind of attention. All right, so it's been a few minutes since we actually cast it out. Um, we're fishing, it's middle of January right now, so fish are a lot more stagnant, um, especially the bigger cats that we're after. So what we're gonna do is actually give it a little bit of movement, see if we could draw some attention to our bait. Start with the tiger. And we're gonna start with this one's the pulling out, So I'm probably gonna give it some reels instead of a tap or a pull. I'll move down to the next one. Stubby, old stubby. I'm gonna do him a happy. Do him a happy. Now what we're doing is just kicking up that bait a little bit, making sure it gets in the current. Just getting some movement on our bait that way. It's not sitting in the same spot forever. These two are Tim Hands. Those two are Tim on there. Jimmy, which one we do to this? Uh, you can go ahead and get that one a half reel. Now that one's not that, not as far out as Timmy's. And thing. this one that's on the end, I actually just want to give that one, um, you know what, let's just go ahead and pull that one back a little bit. Pull back? Yeah, just pull it back. Now, we like to do that because it draws it in toward the bank a little bit. It might get swept up in the current because the current, the undercurrent might be a little bit high right now. Um, the top current's not too bad. But we did notice a little bit of a drift on our bait whenever we cast it out. Um, so whenever we pull back, it pretty much draws it up, lets it get swept up in the current, if there is any, and gives it just a little bit of movement without drawing it too much to the bank. But you got the same amount of line because you didn't reel it in at all. But here in a minute, I'm thinking about casting in, or casting back out that last one that we just pulled back on, and just putting it in a totally different spot. I want to put that one out a lot deeper than it is right now. Explain the weights, the rig, the line test, all of that, all that good shit. Pretty much everything, we're going to explain to you what kind of rod we're using, what kind of line we're using, what kind of rig, how we rig ours up. Give you the whole rundown of exactly what we're doing out here to catch these big ass cats. Alright, so this is actually the kind of rigs that we're using right here. We're using the Carolina rig, eight ounce weight, bead, and we got our leader right here, steel leader, circle hook, like always, 
and then what I got in the mind is a piece of deer meat that's been sitting in that stank ass shit that we showed you guys earlier. And I've got this on an 80 pound braid on a pin rod and reel. But I just reeled that one in. That was the one that was the last one that we actually touched earlier. Your reel, your rod definitely matter when it comes to pain and quality. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're trying to haul in like big ass catfish. We're not over here playing around with like five or ten pound catfish, not no channel cats or mud suckers that a lot of people catch and think they're actually catfishing. So uh, I'm actually gonna go out pretty far with this one. Sling that bitch back and just let it fly. Got some actually a little bit more distance than I wanted to. And I'll let it go for a little bit, let the channel carry it, lock my bell down and just wait till it settles. And we're in the Cafe River. We always use eight ounce weights, no matter what. Yeah, that current will kick up out of nowhere and just take your shit down river like crazy. And we always use no roll sinkers. Not those bank sinkers that, that'll catch up on everything, those little pyramid ones. But we use those flat no roll ones that we just showed you. An eight ounce weight is always the way to go because your shit will not budge. And big ass cat, 30, 40, up to 100 some odd pounds, they won't, they won't feel that shit. If you see that, that rod tip bumping a little bit, it's usually current or maybe leaves catching up on your, on your bait or your weight, but. Like it's doing right now. It looks like yeah. it's settling. But when a big ass cat actually hops on there, you'll that, notice that That bitch bell will ding over. ding on your ass. That bitch will fall over like a fucking candy cane. And I could smell that stank ass shit drifting yeah. my way. <laughs> that shit is no fucking joke, man. But that's what you want because catfish like dirty ass shit. I've seen people catch catfish off of hot dogs. Uh, we were killing them off of chicken liver. Um, anything that really creates a foul ass odor, you'll draw in those cats without a doubt. All right, well, I'm going to check out. We're going to check back in with you. All right, so we finally got a fire going. It's not too bad out here, but it's still a little bit chilly. And we actually just moved our rides real quick. Um, actually just gave them each a, a little bit of a reel. Uh, during the cold winter, you want to make sure that you try to move your bait as often as possible. I'd say let it sit maybe 10 or 15 minutes, go ahead and give it another reel. Because these cats ain't moving. They're not running up and down the river like they usually are in spring and summertime when most people fish. Um, and that's the biggest reason why a lot of people don't fish in the wintertime. Um, just because it is harder fishing. It's harder to fish in the bank, period. You don't have a boat. You just can't pull it to any spot, cast the hell out. You go up and down this river on a boat, man, you could find any good spot you want to in a matter of 20 minute time span. When you're on the bank side, you gotta clear a spot, you gotta walk, you gotta travel, you gotta ruck all the way down there to find a spot on the river that you can actually get to and assess. But since we're out here, we're trying to just make the best of it, trying to keep our bait moving, trying to put it in new spots, um, doing whatever we can to try to draw some kind of attention. The biggest thing, uh, cats are you know, predators. So any kind of predator, they like any kind of prey to be struggling. If that prey is struggling, it's going to cause a lot of riffraff in the, in the water itself, send out a lot of vibrations, and that's what those feelers are for. Those cats with the whiskers, that's what those whiskers are for, is actually sense of vibrations, um, smelling, anything like that. That's why we use stank ass bait when we try to keep our bait moving, um, which is really the only way to fish, period. Whether it's spring, summer, winter, it's just winter, it's a little bit harder. We try not to, we, we, don't, we don't use as much live bait there in the wintertime for the simple fact, just like he said, the cats are a little bit more lazy. They're predators for sure, but they're not trying to sit there and fight like hell for their meal. They can find an easy meal, just like human beings, they're going to do it. So now that we got a bait move, we'll just let it sit for a little bit, see if we could get any kind of action. Um, kind of quiet out here tonight, but we'll see what happens on later on in the night.